Hey, what's going on? Ray Del Vecchio here from WebsiteProfitCourse.com. And you're looking at the first website that I ever put together back in 2005. I was in college at the time and our university gave every student a slice of web space. And I bet you 90% of the people didn't know anything about this or how to use it. But since I was an engineering major, I had to figure it out. And this kind of set me onto the path of learning web design. So I want to go through my timeline and a couple other projects that I worked on to get to where I am today. And if there's anything that I, I found from running my website and talking to subscribers, there's no one standard path to learn web design. It's, it's a very distributed industry where people come from all backgrounds. And it's generally one of those things. There's no like one standardized course of education. If you're going to learn something like graphic design, there's probably like an 80 to 90% chance you're going to use Photoshop and Illustrator. But when it comes to web design, you have probably 30 or 40 or 50 different choices to make. And that complexity turns people away from sticking their toe in the water and just getting started with a project. So I guess I was a little bit lucky in the fact that I had a technical background and I learned HTML, which is pretty much the output of any website. And you don't need to know any of that if you use a system like WordPress. And that's kind of why I wanted to learn WordPress back in 2009. I was in grad school at the time and I had an idea for a sports blog. It was actually called the NFLblog.com, which now I realize is probably trademark infringement. <laughs> but at the time, nobody you know, shut me down. And it was a great experience to learn how to run a content-based website. But then throughout the process of building that blog, I started learning CSS, which is how to design the website. So I was doing a lot of CSS customizations on that WordPress blog. And then I also was digging in a little bit into PHP, which that's the code that WordPress is built with. And I pulled up an interesting little one-page project that I used to learn HTML and CSS. Let's take a look at that. And this is it. I mean, th this wasn't a full website. All I really wanted to do was figure out how to use the basics of HTML and CSS, like create a web page background. And I did that using this wood grain. And on here, I wanted to do post-it note graphics. And then when you hover over them, you get a little bit of an effect. So this was really the first bit of just pure HTML and CSS code that I, that I used together. Now within the next year, as I build up my skill set, I started feeling comfortable enough to want to work with clients and make some money. And I started with two clients. One of them, I was just doing hourly work on their existing website, and they had used somebody who built a website with Adobe Dreamweaver. And the other person, I just built a simple five-page HTML website for them. So over the course of that year, around 2011, I was learning how to work with clients. And then the other thing that I realized is that when you have a code-based website, you have a lot of pieces of code that repeat. And the easiest example of this is your header and your footer. So I started to upgrade the HTML websites to PHP, and all I was doing was creating separate PHP files, like one for the header, one for the footer, and then one for all the different pages. And then in that page code, you would just say, insert the header here, insert the footer here. And that way, if you have the header on five or six different pages, you don't have to edit five or six different pieces of code. You edit one piece of code and it updates everywhere. And that was really the issue I had with Dreamweaver. What was happening was, this guy was using both me and another person to edit his website. He would ask me to make these simple code edits. I was making them. And then the person that was using Dreamweaver was, was using their template. And what, what Dreamweaver would do is it would export all the HTML and overwrite everything that I had done. <laughs> so I learned a lot just about how to deal with people, especially if they're trying to hire multiple people to do one thing. You have to have a lot of communication so errors like that don't happen. And let's take a look at another website that I built with PHP. This website was built for a friend of mine. He does freelance videography and he was doing weddings at the time. So he wanted to create a separate website for that service. And I got to say, this was probably one of my favorite designs. Usually design is what takes me the longest. I'm good with code, but I could spend way, way too much time making simple design decisions. And it was a really simple you know, website. This is, again was, as you can see here, maybe six pages, home, samples, photos, FAQ, pricing, and contact. He already had the logo in place, and I just put in the typography. I made this header image, and I put a couple features in for the gallery. I used Fancybox, which you, you might know as a JavaScript 
library that gives you this modal window for images, which I still use to this day on a lot of websites. As I began to make a little bit of money through the client work, behind the scenes I was creating a bunch of blogs for passive income. I was learning a lot about SEO and the online marketing world. And I have to pull up this uh, notepad file of just some of the domains that I bought, or at least the, the theme for the domains that I bought. I created blogs on toy pinball machines, baby bassinets, laguiole knives, unusual wedding rings, and my, my favorite is window treatments for sliding glass doors. And believe me, that sounds really, really stupid, but the reason I bought all these domains is because I was doing SEO research and these terms didn't have that much competition. So I was basing all my decisions based on the SEO competition and I made the big failure and that's I didn't pick any based on actual passions or things that I was interested in. You know, I was single at the time, so why would I care about wedding rings or baby bassinets? I'm not a toy person, so I had no interest in pinball machines. And I never owned or rented a house at that point, so I had pretty much no idea what lag wheel knives or window treatments were. <laughs> so I was just going in the wrong direction. But throughout that entire process, I, I still learned a lot with WordPress. I was pushing my skills forward in that area. And even though I do view all of them as failures, since none of them are still you know around today, I did make a little bit of money throughout that time. And I also spent a lot of that money on services that I thought were going to help me. These years were tons of education, even though I wasn't making great money. And then because I became more comfortable using WordPress, about 2013 is when I decided to transfer all of my plain HTML or PHP websites over to WordPress. So they were easier to manage and just a little bit more standardized. From that point forward, I decided to use WordPress for every new website that I built. And then around 2014, I kind of looked back on all the client work I had done and tried to extract out my ideal client. And in my case, the best client that I worked with was a roofing company. And so what I did was took the services that I was implementing with their website and online marketing and converted that into monthly packages. And that's how I decided to sell moving forward because I didn't like custom quoting every single project and Working hourly is definitely the worst thing you can do, at least in the long run. It's a great way to start, but it's not a sustainable way to build a business. So this really made the selling process easier. And also because I was trying to work with one niche, the sales conversations became easier. And once I had cracked that code, I decided to actually build a blog under my real name and kind of brand myself as opposed to putting out these niche blogs that were anonymous. So I did that in 2015. Obviously, that project has continued to this day. That's why you're watching this video. And stick around because I'm going to share some freebies with you at the end of this video that you can download from my website. But as you can tell, around this time, I kind of had a good idea for how I wanted to organize my business. From about 2016 until this day, that's been my focus, just growing these income sources that I had started to build over the previous years. And you can really break down my income into these three buckets. You know, if you dig into these, they're, they're a little bit more complicated but I make my money from local clients, digital products, which are just tools or education, online learning. I have a paid membership that teaches you exactly how to create your web design business if you want the exact framework that I used. And then I also make money through affiliate marketing, which all that is is promoting products that you believe in. And, and really the easiest to understand affiliate network is Amazon. You can sign up for Amazon affiliate and then promote any product on Amazon and get a percentage if somebody buys that from your website or your affiliate link. So as you can tell from this, none of my learning has come from standardized sources. It's all come from just pure curiosity and working on projects that I've thought of you know, myself or learning how something works if I see it. You know, A lot of my learning just came from using Google Chrome Inspector on websites where I love the features on the website and I had to figure out how they worked. So if you're looking to take the next step, I want you to take action today. There's no reason to put it off. If you already have a little bit of experience with building websites and you want to monetize that skill, go to my homepage, WebsiteProfitCourse.com, and you can download a free giveaway, which will show you the 15 tools to start your business. These are some of my favorites, and I know that they'll give you a great framework to start with. I'll include a link in the description below and also here in the top right to that giveaway. And if you're more of a beginner with WordPress or you want to make the money online through a blog as opposed to local freelancing, 
I'm just about to release this training series on how to launch your blog in 14 days. By the time I publish, it'll be good to go. So you can go to 14dayblog.com to sign up for that. And I'll also include a link in the description below and in the top right here. As you can tell, you know, I'm a huge advocate of WordPress and just being online. This is especially important in today's world where we're dealing with more remote work, more people choosing to work for themselves in the gig economy. And it's never been more possible to start your own business and make money doing these things. You don't have to rely on a job and I want more people to follow their natural curiosity. And it doesn't have to be in web design or a technical field. You can still build a blog in a very non-technical field. You know, just a great example is that I'm putting together a blog on gardening and I want to kind of build a community just in my local area, people within maybe 10 to 20 miles of me. So regardless of you know, what you want to do, a blog is the perfect place to grow your ideas, refine your communication skills, and potentially use those skills to freelance and make money in a few different ways. So that's all I got for you today, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to give it a thumbs up if you did. And if you have experience with web design, leave a comment below and tell me your story. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you get all the future videos on web design, WordPress, blogging, and also how to be more productive online. Thanks so much for watching this video, and I hope that as soon as you press pause, you start building your own website.